Hi guys, Zach here and welcome to another GameMaker Studio tutorial and today we're going to be looking at cutscenes in your GameMaker game. Here I'm in the project file of So Much Blood. Uh, this is a game that is previously made by me and in the beginning there are cutscenes. So I'm going to demonstrate that cutscene now and then we're going to go into the code and see how I did it. Alright, so that was a pretty basic cutscene, and we're going to get into the details on that right now. So here I am in paint, and I'm just going to kind of demonstrate and go step by step on what we're actually seeing here. So in the beginning, we have our character animation to the side, and that's it. That's all that starts in the room. So if we go to the actual project file in our rm underscore intro, as you can see, we have our player right there. What we're doing is we're cutting this object up into stages. So it has a variable of stage one. So right now it's at stage one. It comes, it shoots into the screen, about the middle here. Then it goes right when it or when it goes to where we want it to go, it immediately goes to stage two. This tells uh, the the object two things for one it tells the object to stop right there and it changes the animation to um, just the bobbing up and down animation and then we set an alarm on it and when the alarm goes off we shift the, the object down but before we do that, it goes into stage three. So stage three hits, it shifts the object down. Stage three again, it for one, shoots the player down, or the uh, object, and it changes its animation to the scared look. And when we're doing that, when it turns to stage three, we then create our antagonist, bad guy object that shoots up to the screen here. which is stage one for him. And then uh, when it gets here, it comes down a little bit into stage two. And it changes animation as well. And then all we're doing is in our um, antagonist object, we just set an alarm for one, two, three, four, five six so these are the six objects that it shows which are the future bosses in the game just by using a particle system and uh, in the code of the objects just bobbing them up and down pretty simple stuff right there and then so another alarm is hit and when that alarm is hit uh, our main object uh, that was right here shoots down again putting it into stage four and this antagonist object shoots into, uh, I believe, stage three, which means it just expands and covers up the screen black. And then it actually transitions into our first level of the game, which is going to be our basic zone. So a lot to undertake here, but if you can understand that when you're doing a cutscene, I like to put a variable of stages into my uh, cutscene objects, knowing where we're at in the cutscene. So if we go into the actual code here, we can see what I'm actually talking about. So here's our intro object. And in the create event, we have stage equals zero. 
alpha equals 0, image speed equals 0 0.1, and then we just play uh, a sound shot move. And we're playing this sound right away because since stage equals 0 in the step event, if stage equals 0, we're using a tweening algorithm to shoot that player directly into the center of the screen. Because the tweening algorithm isn't 100% accurate, it could be off by a couple pixels. It depends what you're altering with this value here. Uh, what I do is I check if x is less than or equal to view underscore w view divided by 2 plus 1. So again, it's not going to be 100% exact. Then our stage equals 1, which I was talking about when it. Okay, so I guess I just mix it up. So uh, it would start off at 0, not 1, and then so it would go to stage 1, 2, 3. So it starts off stage 0, it flies in, it goes to stage 1 immediately. And then you'll notice we set an alarm, and this is how long we're going to wait. And in alarm 0, we set stage to equal 2. We set up a new sprite index, and then we create our boss, our intro boss. So if we go into our intro boss here, again, it's pretty much the same thing. We have um, just uh, initializing the particle system that we need. We have alpha, we have stage, we have animation. So you'll notice in the beginning of that cutscene, the boss doesn't animate until he gets all the way up. We initially set an alarm 0 to equal room speed uh, multiplied by 5. And spawn equals 0. That's just for spawning. So then in the step event, we have the same thing here. If stage equals 0, then our y plus equals you know, wherever we want it to go. And then if stage equals 0 and y is less than view under short h view, you know, minus 69, then stage equals 1. Now we don't set an alarm 0 because we originally set an alarm zero in the create event. So, and this alarm zero is when we start spawning things. And so we just say if spawn equals zero, you know, then create the basic intro, if spawn equals one, etc. And then we just check if spawn equals eight, stage equals three, and we set an alarm, or else let's continue to go through alarm zero and create all of the objects that we need. So we hit stage equals one, when stage equals one, this is just our bobbing up and down. Then y goes here. And then if y equals this, then stage equals two. And if stage equals two, then we're gonna start animating our uh, object, our sprite. And then when stage equals three, then we expand it completely, and here you see if anim, anim equals true, then we just set the image speed equal 1, if image index is greater than or equal to 4, and animation equals false, and the sprite index equals a boss intro. So we want him to open his eyes, and then we don't want him to keep opening his eyes, so then that's when we just switch it and keep animating it, though. All right. Draw event, pretty simple stuff. Uh, the only reason we put that alpha in there is because when the and it, the boss comes into the room, the background shifts to like a darker color. So if we go back into our intro, we let that boss do its thing, you know, all that it needs to do. And when that boss gets created by alarm zero, stage equals two. And in the step event, if stage equals two, if image index is greater than or equal to three and sprite index equals as player animation intro, image index equals zero, and we start doing our as player sad intro, which uh, turns the sprite from you know looking happy and yeah it's you know it's colorful well not really colorful but it's bright uh, to oh no what 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 is this, what's going on here? So then alarm one equals uh, room speed time times eleven. So we let we let the boss object do its thing, and then we turn to stage equal three, and then stage three just drops the player down, just like we demonstrated here. So instead of stage four, it's stage three. I'm sorry, I got that mixed up. And it just drops it down, 
and then at stage three at that point the boss expands and we're golden so um, just something I want to just look at here uh, you know we have our other objects like our old lava intro and all that basically when I just did that I parented it off of this guy which just bobs these these boss objects up and down so pretty simple stuff but what I want you to get out of this tutorial is that these intros you know you got to be sort of creative in it but what I did initially to work out how these intros are going to go about is I made a screen that looked very similar to this plan out your intro stage it out correctly um, you know zero this is zero this is one this is two this is three you can do anything you want in an intro whether it be dialogue it doesn't matter um, but make sure you're staging out these cutscenes correctly and you're gonna get something that looks pretty cool all right, guys, so that's going to be it for today. Leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's go ahead and try for 100 likes this time. And let me know if I didn't touch on something that you wanted me to touch on. So, peace.